Mmm, would you look at those grapes? I tell you, grapes are one of my favorite fruit. Uh, what are some of your favorite fruits? Maybe share it with your family right there where you're at, what, what you like to eat. Well, in today's lesson, we're learning about Joshua and Caleb. Now, Moses and the Israelites finally made it to the Promised Land, and they sent Joshua and Caleb in as scouts to check things out. Well, they come back with some grapes and some news. Let's see what happened in our Gospel Project video. God's people had traveled out of Egypt and were almost to the Promised Land. God told Moses to send men to scout out the land of Canaan. This is the land God was giving to the Israelites. So Moses sent out one leader from each family tribe. Moses told the leaders to see what the land was like and whether the people living there were strong or weak, few or many. Moses had many questions. Is the land good or bad? Are the cities they live in camps or forts? Is the land good for farming? Are there any trees? Moses urged the scouts to be courageous. So the 12 scouts traveled throughout the land for 40 days. They cut down a cluster of grapes that was so big, it took two men to carry it on a pole. Then they went back to tell Moses, Aaron, and the other Israelites what they saw. The land is good. It is flowing with milk and honey, they said. But the people who live there are strong and the cities they live in are large and well protected. Then Caleb, one of the men sent to scout out the land said, we must go up and take possession of the land. We can certainly conquer it with God's help. Oh no! But other men disagreed. We can't go up against the people. They are stronger than we are. We look like grasshoppers compared to them. The people were afraid and they cried all night. They thought Moses and Aaron had brought them to Canaan to die. The Israelites said, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Joshua and Caleb tore their clothes and said again, the land we explored is extremely good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will give it to us. Don't be afraid of the people living in the land. God is with us. The Lord spoke to Moses. How long will these people not trust me? God threatened to destroy all the people, but Moses urged God to forgive them. Moses reminded God that he is patient, loving, and forgiving. Since Caleb and Joshua had followed God completely, God decided to let them enter the Promised Land. God said that the Israelites who did not trust him would wander in the wilderness 40 years and they would not enter the Promised Land. All of the spies who went to scout out the land died before entering except for Joshua and Caleb. The Israelites rebelled against God because they did not trust him. Jesus trusted God perfectly. He took the punishment we deserve for our sin or rebellion against God. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sin and gives us eternal life. In Isaiah 64, 8, we see that God is the potter and we are the works of his hand. Because he is our creator and he is a good and loving father, we can trust him. He will mold us and use us for his good purposes. Here I have two pieces of clay. I have one that's really soft and easy to mold and I have one that's really hard and I can't do much with it. When we disobey, we are like the hard clay. It's hard to be molded and used. Joshua and Caleb obeyed and they trusted God to provide the promised land to his people. But the rest of the scouts didn't and God did not use them because they were so stubborn. God wants us to trust him to do incredible things in our life. In fact, he invites us to see all of the impossible things that he can do with our lives. He wants to take care of our sin, get rid of it completely and give us hearts that can trust him fully. And when we trust in God fully, he can use us to help build his kingdom here on earth. Isn't that awesome? Let's pray together. 
Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of your son. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross and take our sins away. God, thank you that you don't need to use us to build your kingdom, but you choose to do that. And we get to be a part of your amazing, incredible, and wonderful plan here on earth. Please forgive us of our sins and help us just to trust you with everything that we have. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.